My name is David Calvo, and I'm the Director of Family and Community Engagement at CABE, the California Association for Bilingual Education. We are today at CABE Conference 2023, and I'm so excited to have run into Dr. Socorro Herrera. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you for asking me and being so patient. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear that you have an amazing session. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I'm hoping this the session is amazing. I'm going to be talking today about biography and biography-driven instruction. And so what does that mean? So we hear about culturally responsive pedagogy, culturally sustaining pedagogy, but what does that mean in action? We know, we know what culturally responsive and culturally sustaining means in theory, but in the classroom, as we enact our craft, we are really attending to the individual learner. We're attending to what I like to refer to the biopsychosocial history of the learner, meaning that we, when we find ourselves, when we present ourselves into any space, especially in the classroom, we bring with us our skin color, the characteristics of our face. You know. yeah. Um, somos indígenas o somos... Lolo dice, eres italiano. Ah, no, no eres italiano, eres mexicano. ¿De dónde eres? Because I think that it's just part of who we are to try to assume and a lot about another human being. And we bring our language. And our language, um, if we're urban or rural, indígena, guatemalteco, mexicano, Nicaragüeño, so, donde venga nos traemos nuestro, nuestro idioma, we have that language that, that really identifies the markers of who we are and how we have um, harvested our funds within, of knowledge within our families. Quienes somos nuestra identidad. And so we come to the classroom and oftentimes we get taught with this out of the same box with the same book with the same worksheet lo mismo lo mismo todo el tiempo and so the session really looks to say how do you not only provide opportunity para que el niño de de lo de lo que trae sea lo que sea todos traemos algo decía mi papá todo el tiempo hija todos tenemos un don Claro que sí. No te voy a decir lo que decías, hay unos que son bien, pero todos sabemos el don. Y lo que es importante es ver a cada persona con ese don. So, I, so a lot of what my mom and my dad, who didn't have a high level of education, you know, eran campesinos, what, but they taught me so much. Y todo el tiempo cuento este cuentito que un día estaba con un grupo de alumnos, some that were gifted in this and that and the other, y uno de los niños que que no hablaba el inglés. We were doing the post summative sort of work and the little boy wrote. Um, en esta historia, la persona estaba encarcelada. That was not good. And so, todos los otros niños, yes, I think that he went to jail because he got in trouble y esas cosas. Y entonces, les, les expliqué a los otros niños, did you know encarcelada means in Incarcerated. That's a big word. And it means the same thing as going to jail. You can just use one word in Spanish. El niño estaba así que brotaba de felicidad. But I had to open up the space in the classroom for kids to put down what they brought, document it, use it, highlight it, lift it. So we always talk, affirm, you know, what the kid knows. Be sustaining what they know. But we don't take enough up. We don't provide the opportunity often enough. And then if we do provide the opportunity, we don't continue to open up the access by la que sigan adelante. All right, so we are here at COVID 2023 and the theme is testimonios, the power of our stories, our art and our dreams. How did you get into the bilingual education space? <laughs> Porque soy de Portales, Nuevo México. Yeah, bueno, anduvimos por todas partes porque trabajamos en el algodón, trabajamos en el betabel, en la cebolla, oh, te hago toda la lista. Y por gracia de Dios, por un poder, del poder que hay en el mundo, I had people lift me and there was a, a scholarship to become a teacher. And so I became a teacher, and I, a bilingual ed teacher. And, y todo lo que me faltó a mí 
lo vi en, que, en esta preparación, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not done. Valgo por dos, como decía mi papá, valgo por dos. <laughs> and I had this opportunity to do, to do this in the schools. Became super energized. You know, Portales is where Serna versus Portales happened. You know, one of the um, lawsuits that set precedent. And so I went into bilingual ed. Y luego, cuando salí de la preparación, I saw that in schools it was not where it needed to be. Y eso es lo que estamos peleando hasta ahorita. You know, it's that, that we have the law, we have the research, we have los testimonios, porque aquí me tienes, no soy producto de educación especial. Pero cuando, de, no es educación especial, de educación bilingüe, but I have a special ed background too. Desde que todavía estamos peleando lo mismo, todavía estamos con lo mismo. Entonces entré al aula y vi a que mis niños en mi aula, porque yo, aunque no era programa bilingüe, I was still doing what I, my craft. When no one was looking, I was still doing. I was working with families, reading. And as my kids left my classroom, they'd get to third and fourth grade, and all of a sudden they were being referred for special ed. Y decía yo, oye, pero José leía cuando se fue el kinder, cuando se fue el primer grado, ya iba leyendo, ya se conocía de qué le pasó. And so, I find that I still am having the conversation and we're still fighting the, the battle. So, as we move forward, tenemos que seguir adelante con fuerza y con amor y con just this, this persistence that, that we have to keep, we have to keep sharing our research. Porque al último momento no se me abrieron las puertas cuando estaba de maestra. Entonces, si saco la maestría, entonces, entonces voy a poder mover este, mover la agujita. Un poco. No, un poco. No, la agujita no se movió. Entonces, dije, saco el doctorado. Porque entonces, pues, ¿qué van a decir? Esta persona tiene conocimiento, claro, tiene doctorado. Sí. Claro, no, sí. no importa que tengas, si según quien, con quién te topes, este, tienes que buscar tus aliados. You have to find those allies and, and keep moving forward. But you know, what I see today is hope that just being a cabe, I see all the wonderful programs. I'm in Kansas. I went to Kansas porque había mucha necesidad cuando terminé. No iba por tres años y tengo 28. Wow. Y luego cuando pasó ANS, well, we became an English only state. And, but now the needle there is moving back to dual language programs, to understanding that it's not an, an English only curriculum. Que nuestro ser está ubicado en nuestro idioma, you know, en nuestra cultura, en nuestras experiencias, en nuestra historia. And so here I am and here you are. <laughs> siguiendo yeah. adelante. I see that you do family engagement, la familia. Es, es el corazón de claro. todo el aprendizaje. And we come with so much knowledge, whether we're migrant, whether we're immigrant, whether we're refugee, whether it doesn't matter. We are living in the world and experience it. And isn't that what we're supposed to be learning in school? Just elaborating on that? Yes. On real world, you know, experience. So. so earlier you were talking about this time in the past and we're still fighting these same challenges. What, what are issues that we need to confront? What are threats right now to bilingual education in, in our space? The misinformation. The misinformation, I mean, look at uh, SOR, you know, the science of reading and, and the agenda there. Um, that's a, it's become such a tidal wave that we are failing to ask about our dual language context and what it means to read if you have a child who comes in already literate and schooled from their home country. Yes. Uh, you know, we don't just take a child who arrives and put them into the lowest level of phonics instruction because they don't speak English. And so I think our, our threat is, is not paying attention to the current research that exists about the effectiveness of dual language. Um, it, our threat is political. Uh, our threat is not providing autonomy to do their craft. Um, I think in teachers across the country, sometimes there's fear that if I don't do what I'm being told to do, I'm going to be fired. But it was like the, 
keynote person yesterday said, if, if you have so much fear that you're going to be fired, you're not going to be doing what's right for the students and the families and the community. In, y eso es lo que importa. A último momento es lo único que importa es. But I also understand teachers' fears. I mean, if you are the main breadwinner for your you know, home, this day is difficult. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Herrera, as we bring this interview to a close, I wonder if you have any final thoughts to share with our audience. Yo diría que lo más, vamos a seguir adelante. Tenemos un poder, tenemos un conocimiento, tenemos un empuje. We have so much power. Tenemos que echarlo a volar. Decía mi papá, echarlo a volar. You know, nobody owns the English language. Si tenemos acentos, si se nos olvidan unas palabras, lo importante es echar el poder a volar porque todos tenemos, el espacio es de todos. It doesn't belong to one person. The, the language doesn't belong to one person. It's what we use to communicate and to send joy to the world. And so that's it. Adelante y con fuerza y, y sin miedo. Porque ya está, a este punto de nuestra vida, we should have no fear. We should just do what's right. You know, we always used to talk about the demographics are changing. No, the demographics have changed. <laughs> the time is right now. So I see. Es lo con eso de so thank you for interviewing me. That was easier than I thought. Thank, I thank hate you so doing much for this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I'm enjoying every single second. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah.